Well, I know you've asked the question. I certainly have. Where do we go when we die? If you ask a medium, well, you'll get all kinds of answers and all kinds of locations. But where do we go instantly, immediately after we die? Thousands and thousands of people over the years have gone to Hansen's mortuary. And I invited a part of the Hansen family here, Brad Hansen, to answer the question, what's it like to deal with the bodies themselves and the families of those departed people? When you get a body, for example, what do you do? Well, that's a, most people don't know what we do. And obviously, we bring the deceased into our care. And when we do that, we bring the body into our facility. And we have preparation facilities, a uh, preparation room where the body is taken to. And you can kind of look at it like an operating room. It has a table. It has different various equipment and stainless steel uh, cabinets and sinks and things of this nature. And we treat everybody as if it's uh, with universal precautions, where it could possibly have a contagious disease that we're not aware of. Mm. So we have to do all those things uh, that is recommended by OSHA and what have you. So we fall under OSHA in that regards. So once the body, though, is brought into our care, we wash, bathe the body. If the family has given us permission to proceed with embalming and body preparation uh, in that regard, we go ahead and do it at that time. If not, we do place the body then still in our care under refrigeration uh, in our uh, different locations. For how long? Well, as long as it takes for the family to make you know up their mind, what are they going to do? Are they going to have a funeral? Are they going to do cremation? Generally speaking, uh, from the time that we bring the, their loved one into our care, and by the time, uh, whether it's a cremation or a funeral service, that whole process can take anywhere from four to eight days, just depending. As far as the refrigeration aspect of it, we must place the body under refrigeration uh, within 24 hours of time of death. Uh, and so that way we meet the standards that are uh, from the Arizona State Board of Funeral Directors. What percentage of people choose cremation as opposed to burial? Good question, Pat. It's running right now, and Arizona has a high cremation rate. Within our facilities, our cremation rate is about 60%. Uh, there are, uh, it's running probably 64, 65 in the state of Arizona. Is it because primarily of the cost, the difference? No, cost? I, uh, cost is a factor. Is it the primary factor? No, I don't believe that it is. I think that a lot of it is it's the wishes of the deceased. It's the wishes of the family. They, they think that it's environmentally, environmentally friendly. They don't want to take up precious ground or things of that nature. Uh, so there's a lot of factors uh, in the decision of, of doing that. When do you do autopsies? Uh, generally speaking, autopsies are done by the medical examiner. If the cause of death is unknown or if it's under suspicious circumstances or if they're involved in an accident, the medical examiner will take the uh, person into their care, do the autopsy there. Uh, sometimes the family wants a private autopsy uh, for their own peace of mind and or they have concerns of that there may have been something suspicious about the death even though uh, there may not be, uh, maybe it was an operational procedure that was done and they feel that that may have part, you know, helped the cause of death. Um, so it's, we don't do as many autopsies as we used to though. Talk to us, all of us, because I think we're all particularly curious about the cosmetology factor. We have absolutely no idea how it is that you can manage to make anybody look as as if they were living, <laughs> that old line. Right. Um, many people, they don't realize that, you know what, we use everyday makeup that women and men use. Uh, we um, certainly ask for a picture of the deceased, a recent photograph, so we have that to work from. And then we just go about our job of trying to match. We talk with the family, say, how did your mom wear her hair? How did your dad comb his hair? Did he have a full beard? Did he, you know, what are these things? Do we need to trim it? We go through all those procedures. Did she wear much makeup? Did she wear red uh, lipstick? And we ask a lot of questions to get it right. And then when the family does come in, we ask the family, come in an hour ahead of time before the viewing, make sure it looks right. If it doesn't, we gotta make the changes at that How time. How do you keep the eyes and the mouth closed? <laughs> 
good question. Uh, we have what we call little eye caps. And if you think of a contact lens, but only with little divots on it, so to speak, they're placed into the eye, keeps the eyes closed. The mouth is a little bit different. Um, sometimes uh, we have what we call an injector uh, needle and wire that we just wire the mouth together on the inside. If somebody asks for an unusual kind of wardrobe, do you decide for yourself, no, we can't do that at Hanson's? Um, no, if it, as long as it's within reason. Uh, well, what's within reason? <laughs> I was reading about a, a clown, as a uh, matter of yes. fact, who'd spent uh, his red, entire life as a clown. And they dressed in the clown suit. And he had the makeup on of the costume. Yeah, yep, absolutely. If someone requested us to do that, absolutely, we would do that. I've had people, they're farmers. They, that's all they you know, done all their life, and they wear the bib overalls, and they got to have the, you know, the handkerchief and the hat, I mean, everything. So we've had bikers where they want the vest and the colors. Uh, so there, uh, I even hate to say this, but there's some people that have done some unusual things that uh, they place maybe in the foot of the casket. They may not want the public to know about it, so they place it in the foot of the casket. And finally, what about you, Brad Hansen? Are you going to be cremated or buried? Well, I'm going to be, actually, I'm going to be what they call entombed. We have a cemetery. We have mausoleum, and those are spaces above ground. And our family uh, at our cemetery, we have above ground space and mausoleum, so I will be embalmed, casketed, and placed in our mausoleum out at our cemetery. I hope that we've been able to do what we set out to do on this segment on KTAR.com, and that is to ask the questions that you would be sensitive about asking to someone like the Hansen family at Hansen Mortuary. That's why we call it, what's it like?